And it's very amazing when we see individuals like you uh, opening themselves in the way you are opening yourselves. Mm -hmm. Because it makes many of us, in a way, understand that we are not the only ones going through different processes in the relationships with loved ones. I had a, you know, a hard time relation with my mom, mm -hmm. uh, a woman I own much in, 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 in who I am, a woman that showed me love for others and for cooking. What was her name? But uh, Marisa. Marisa. Uh, she was a nurse, and, but I always had a huge, difficult relationship. One of the reasons I always left home early and I was in the world trying to find a way to belong away from my home, in part was this love. Hmm. Difficult, I will not say hate, but difficult relationship uh, with my mom. But, but I want to know how did making this show and, and, and talking to other people shape the way you personally understand grief now? Yeah, yeah I, look, I think it's particularly hard when somebody, you know, you're, whether it's a parent or a friend who dies and, you've, and it's an and it's, uh, uncomfortable death. It, it is, it's, there's unresolved issues, there's, you know, there's a complicated relationship, and that adds a whole other layer, I think, to, to grief. Um, for me, I, you know, grief was not something I ever really, I didn't talk about. My dad died when I was 10 years old. Um, it was an event that completely shaked my foundations and completely altered the trajectory of my life. Uh, my brother Carter uh, died uh, 11 years later by suicide he, um, in, in front of my mom and he killed himself in front of my mom my, right before my senior year of college. And um, yeah, and then my mom died four years ago. And for me, I was, uh, my, my whole life I feel, I sort of feel like I've been shaped and whittled by grief and loss. And um, what I realized after my mom died, which I didn't expect was the kind of the, the loneliness of it, the, um, the sense of being the last person uh, from the little nuclear family that I grew up with left alive. And that, I was ready for my mom's death. She was 95, she'd lived an extraordinary life. There was, unlike with your mom, there was, you know, we had a complicated relationship, but I, I, I was often much more, I was often, you know, in a parental role, giving her advice, like dating advice, and totally inappropriately, I'd be like, mom, he's gay. Um, uh, you know, which when you're 11, it's, it's a little weird. Um, but um, I think what, what you know, I, with my mom, luckily, I, when my mom turned 91, uh, I decided to have this intentional conversation with her because I didn't want there to be anything left unsaid between us. I didn't want there to be things I didn't know about her like there is with my dad. There's a lot I don't know about my dad's life and, and I would like to know. Um, and so we spent a year having a conversation over email and I, it's one of the great blessings of my life that we did that because it, you know, when she did die, there, there, you know, we had the most extraordinary two weeks together before she died and I was by her side and we laughed and I discovered we had, the, I always wondered where I have this weird giggle from and I discovered like, I only discovered afterward because I was recording the conversations we were having in the last week of her life. And when I listened to it later, I realized we were laughing so much and it was the first time I realized we have the exact same giggle. It sounds like a chicken being strangled, but like literally it's the exact same and I can't believe I never knew that. So I discovered things about her even in the last week of her life. What I didn't expect though is the sense of loneliness uh, that I would feel after it. I, I thought I was ready, but I didn't realize when you're the last person from the family you grew up with, the last person who, you know, there's no one alive who knew me as a child, who knew the little boy that I was. And I, in this podcast and talking to, I started going through my mom's stuff, which was also going through my dad's stuff and my brother's stuff because it had all been packed away and no one had ever gone through it. I found myself recording, uh, I didn't plan on making a podcast, I'm not sure the world needs another podcast, but I just started recording stuff because I would read this, I'm, I love Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning and in it he talks about narrating experiences, horrible, he was in Auschwitz, he talks about narrating horrible experiences he was going through in his head 
as a way of sort of distancing himself from the experience um, and being able to get through the experience. And I started just not realizing that's what I was doing. That's what I started doing recording. And I decided to ultimately make it a podcast because I realized how alone I felt in this process of going through my mom's stuff and realizing this is a process probably everybody in this room has gone through or will go through at some point in their life. And uh, you know, I realized it gave me great strength in doing the podcast to, to hear from, I mean, I've heard from literally probably 20,000 people with direct messages on Instagram, very personal voice, I've received like a thousand voicemails and I'm still in the process of listening to them. Um, but that this is a road all of us have traveled down and, and that gave me great, a great feeling of, of, that helped me tremendously to not feel so alone in my grief, to know that this is a road all of us will go down at some point and it feels isolating and alone. It feels like we're the first one on this strange road and in this strange world of grief. But to know that you know, we have all gone through it and everybody will go through it. And there's great strength, I think, in that.